Well, we obviously have a, a great challenge ahead of us here um, tomorrow night. Quick turnaround. Um, you know, Kevin, in my opinion, has done a, another great job with his team. <clears throat> Certainly, there's been, you know, a lot of talk of the players that that uh, that are missing. But um, you know, the way they're playing right now, um, how they've continued to improve and get better, you know, over the course of the season. Um, you know, I think Odom is, you know, one of the best players, all-around players in this league. Uh, Fuller has really, really emerged into being an outstanding point guard. Uh, Parker is, is playing very well, coming off a great game against Auburn. Um, Siakam, you know, just their whole entire team. They play together. Um, they're unselfish. They move in past the basketball. They're very difficult to guard um, uh, on offense. And then I think maybe the most underrated part of them is is how well they guard. You know, I think if you look at the percentages from the field, from the three-point line, they have been solid all year long defensively. So great challenge here tomorrow for us. Our first question is from Chip Towers of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Billy, how you doing? Good, thanks. Hey, uh, j just tell me, uh, I know you've answered this question a lot. You guys just had such a terrific run and everything. How, how do you resolve uh, the rest of the league when it comes to postseason play after uh, you guys in Kentucky? That's a, I, I assume, is going to be a real dilemma for – for that selection committee when it gets down to it. Yeah, I, I mean, I think ultimately it all comes down to, you know, I guess what your resume looks like. It all comes down to, you know, the wins and those kind of things. I would say this, you know, the, the, the teams that at least we've played up to this point in time, and this is our first time playing Vanderbilt, and uh, last week was our first time playing Ole Miss. Um, there are a lot of really, really good teams that I think – would if the opportunity was given to be in the tournament could really do some special things in the tournament. I mean, I think you can go from top to bottom right now and obviously it's going to play itself out uh with records and RPIs and whatever the committee looks for, uh, you know, um in terms of making those selections, but you know, I think you look at the way Georgia has played, I think you look at the fact that, you know, Ole Miss, you know, we just played them is very very good. I think, you know, Tennessee's outstanding, LSU's talented, Arkansas's played very very well. Um, you know, Missouri, another team. So I think there's a lot of teams right now that we have a great opportunity to get a good number of teams in, but a lot of it's going to depend on how it shakes out these next two weeks of the regular season and then certainly our conference tournament. Next up is Jerry Tipton of the Lexington Herald Leader. Billy, everyone's expecting you guys to be uh, the new number one team in the country. What does that mean to you and the team? I don't think a whole lot, Jerry. You know, um, I think rankings are a revolving door. Um, every week they change. Um, uh, when 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 teams lose in front of you and you win, you move up. Um, certainly, you know that that's probably a good conversational piece. You know, having that, but I mean that really has you know nothing to do. I think with what we're trying to do. I think during you know, the course of this season, um, you know, our guys never really had a goal of, hey, listen, let's try to be number one in the country. Um, you know, it really doesn't mean anything right now. Um, we don't start any games, you know, with a lead. Um, you know, there's no nothing given to us there. It's just something that people vote on, people have their opinion on. And, um, you know, whether or not that happens or not here, you know, we'll wait and see. But, you know, for us right now, the most important thing is, you know, our next game, you know, and that's getting prepared to play against Vanderbilt. And um, our guys will will need to keep their focus strictly on that right now. Um, and, again, you know, you, you get uh, obviously uh, rankings that start in the preseason. They change each week. Some teams stay ranked longer than others. Some teams fall out. Um, I just think it's a process for us with our team of us trying to get better and improve each and every day. You know, shore up the things we haven't done well from the previous game, try to continue to improve in areas on both ends of the floor. And to me right now, the ranking part of it has nothing to do and doesn't help in any of those things at all. And I don't know if you heard Kevin Stallings, but he, he remarked about how uh, your guys play as a unit. Uh, he said uh, defensively like no team he's seen in 15 years in the SEC. And every coach wants his team to play with a unity of purpose. What is it about these guys, or why has it come together for you guys this year as opposed to any other year? 
Well, you know, I thought we were really good defensively last year. You know, Jerry, if you looked at the numbers and where we ranked and what we did, we were we were really, really a good defensive team last year. I think we've gotten better. Um, I don't think to start this season we were anywhere nearly as good um, as we were a year ago. Um, you know, I, I think there's things that we do defensively that they know they have their jobs and their responsibility, and a lot of that is, you know, predicated on really trying to help each other. And I don't think your defense is ever any good unless everybody's kind of pulling together and everybody's kind of covering for each other. Um, I do think for our group, um, those guys, especially the four older guys, have been through a lot. You know, they've, they've been through a lot. They, they've been scarred in a lot of ways, you know, through competition. Um, they've had some great moments, and they've had some devastating moments. And I think that they've learned that, you know, collectively together as one, you get a lot more accomplished that way than you do by, you know, playing individually. And, you know, our guys, I think, for the most part, have done, you know, a good job in that area. But I would tell you this as a coach, it's a battle every single day, you know, to, to get them to do those things. And um, it's been a very, very coachable group. It's been a good group to work with each day. Um, I think it's been a group that's been committed to trying to get better so far. Thanks. Next up is Chip Howard of KZNE Radio and College Station. Billy, I was wondering if you could speak to the uniqueness and the challenges of coaching at Vanderbilt from the inline. Yeah, you know, um, I, I don't know, maybe because I've been in the league long enough that, you know, you kind of maybe get used to it. You know, certainly Kevin – knows you know the ins and out of that probably better than anybody because of the amount of years he's been there um you know it is a unique place um i think there is something special about their place and their home court and their environment and um you know you almost feel like you're on a stage playing uh but listen for half the game you know the ball is going to be in front of our bench and for half the game it's going to be in front of vanderbilt's bench and um you know our guys at least some of them um, you know, they've, they've been there before. Uh, there's some other guys who will be the first time. Uh, but I still think that, you know, both teams are dealing with the same thing, so to speak. Um, so it, it's a, it definitely is a unique place. I think it's a special place. Um, and, um, you know, we really haven't necessarily tried to do anything, you know, drastically different going into the building. We've just kind of done what we've always done. I'm wondering if you could uh, speak to how you were able to uh, stop Marshall Henderson in the second half Saturday and what you did differently than what you were trying to do in the first half. Well, I'm not so sure we did, you know, that, that much different. I think the one thing, if there was any area I thought we did a better job is I, I thought we let him play way too much right on top of the three-point line in the first half. Um, he was he was always running around free um, right on top of the line, and – even when we did get to him, um, we didn't really extend his catches. We didn't make it difficult for him to, you know, because he's going to shoot it from about anywhere on the court. Um, but I, I, I would say this about Henderson. You know, the, the one thing with him is you're not eliminating him shooting the basketball. I think Andy puts him in some great situations that he's going to get shots, and a lot of times you're at the mercy of whether or not he makes it or not. And he's got unbelievable range, and he's a fearless competitor that will shoot it at any point in time. So I thought in the first half he actually had – excuse me, in the second half he actually had some really decent looks that just did not go down. In the first half I thought he made some really difficult ones that we defended pretty well. So I can't sit there and tell you it was all of our defense. Um, I'm sure a couple of those shots he probably wishes he had back because he – he did have a pretty clean look. They were from deep, but he's certainly shown in the past he can make those kind of shots. 